All right, so let's talk about the economic efficiency of an oligopoly market. Now, remember, oligopoly in terms of market power is a price setter. And remember that price setters face a downward sloping demand curve. We have seen this before in monopoly. We have seen it before in monopolistic competition. So we're just reviewing the same exact thing. Because oligopoly behaves very similarly to either monopoly or monopolistic competition, we're going to see the same efficiency problems all over again. Because oligopoly is facing a downward sloping demand curve, that means that when they decide on the profit maximizing quantity, they are going to choose a quantity that is lower than equilibrium quantity, the efficient productive quantity in a market, and they're going to charge a higher price than equilibrium price. So because they're choosing a quantity that is lower than equilibrium quantity and a price that is higher than equilibrium price, there will be a deadweight loss, and because there will be a deadweight loss in the market, there will be inefficiency, economic inefficiency in the market. Now, understand that is for society. It's inefficient for society for the use of its resources. But it's not inefficient for the oligopoly firms themselves. They are benefiting greatly by doing this. Okay, So they are gaining producer surplus at the expense of consumer surplus and deadweight loss. Okay, So consumer surplus goes down, pr uh, producer surplus goes up, and dead weight loss goes up, and we have a dead weight loss. Okay, um, so now let's look at uh, graphically what this dead weight loss looks like. We're going to compare the monopoly cooperative oligopoly to the monopolistic competition competitive oligopoly firms. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to compare uh, the economic efficiency of a cooperative. Uh, oligopoly versus a competitive oligopoly. So a cooperative oligopoly is more like monopoly and so it has a steeper demand curve than the monopolistic competition. The competitive, which is more like monopolistic competition, is going to have a flatter demand curve and therefore also a flatter marginal revenue curve where over here we have a steeper marginal revenue curve. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to identify the equilibrium price and quantity. Remember that um, that our marginal cost curve is basically our supply curve, right? So uh, ideally, we should, in an efficient market, uh, we should see production and quantity and price where marginal cost is equal to the demand curve right here. So this would be the efficient quantity. So we're going to say quantity with a little e for efficient. And then over here, bring over the price, this would be from the demand curve, this would be the efficient price. Okay, But this group of firms are all going to collude, they're going to cooperate with each other and agree to produce a quantity where marginal revenue for the entire industry is equal to the marginal cost for the entire industry. And therefore, they are actually going to produce a smaller quantity that intersects here and you can see that that's going to be the profit maximizing quantity. It is the profit, it's going to maximize profit for the industry and then each of the firms will take their share. Okay, But ultimately it'll benefit, it should benefit all of them. Uh, and so that's a smaller quantity. You can see that the quantity is now smaller but we're going to go up to the demand curve and then over and you'll see now that the price P prime, I got to put a prime on this Q. P prime, that's the profit maximizing price. You can see that the profit maximizing price is higher. So this group is going to produce a smaller quantity at a higher price and it's going to benefit all of them. Now, here's what I want you to focus on here is I want you to see the dead weight loss. The dead weight loss is this triangle right in here. I'm going to darken it in as much as possible. There is our dead weight loss. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare that dead weight loss to the dead weight loss over here. Um, you can also compare the producer surplus and the consumer surplus, uh, but we're just going to focus on the dead weight loss. Uh, okay, over here, we're going to go to the intersection here of the marginal cost curve and the demand curve. This would give us our efficient quantity and our efficient price. Whoops, excuse me, let's go horizontal there. Our efficient price for this market. 
Now, all of these oligopoly firms, they're competing with each other. Okay. Now, uh, even though they're competing with each other, uh, uh, they're still going to benefit because they have a downward sloping demand curve. So they're going to produce a smaller quantity. Here's our smaller quantity, our profit maximizing quantity. We'll put Q prime. And then, whoops, that's not quite vertical. Uh, it is kind of vertical. All right, then we'll go up to the demand curve and we'll come over. You'll notice that with the competitors, the price increase, P prime, profit maximizing, you'll see here, look, the price difference is not as large as the price difference over here, okay? Also, I want to show you that the deadweight loss isn't quite as large either. This, even though there is a deadweight loss, this triangle is not quite as large as this triangle over here, okay? It's stunted a little bit. It's squished down at the top a little bit. So this one is going to have not as much inefficiency as the cooperative oligopoly. And so this is a big deal. This is a, we're, we're, we're just learning the principle of it, the idea that oligopoly firms can either cooperate or they can compete. But you got to dig in much deeper than what I'm showing you to really understand why are they competing or why are they cooperating. And then there's things you can look at like cheating, when they cooperate. What if one of them cheats on the cooperation, you know? Like siblings do that all the time, right? They all agree, okay, everybody gets five, right? And then one of them steals two extra, so they get seven. And then everybody else gangs up on that one person and says, hey, what are you doing, okay? So cheating behavior, now that's something you'd look in into at the intermediate or the advanced level. But the idea that oligopoly firms can either cooperate or compete uh, is a big deal. Uh, and what you'll see here is this. Because on the cooperative side, they behave more like a monopoly, there's a larger deadweight loss. And therefore, when oligopoly firms cooperate, uh, that's less economically efficient. It's not as good for society. It's better for the firms, but not good for the not as good for the consumers. This is one of the reasons why the government gets involved and imposes antitrust laws and antitrust regulations. Okay, but over here you'll see a smaller deadweight loss, and that means that when oligopoly firms compete with each other, it it produces a more efficient market, a more economically efficient market that provides more utility per dollar for the consumers. The last thing we're going to say is overall, see the bottom here, overall oligopoly is less efficient than monopolistic competition, but more efficient than monopoly. So even though the cooperative oligopoly acts like a monopoly, it's still going to wind up being probably more economically efficient than a monopoly will. And over here, even though a competitive uh, industry, oligopoly industry, is more efficient, monopolistic competition is probably still going to be more efficient than the oligopoly. Okay, So basically what you have is a situation where the most efficient market structure is perfect competition. Then general, and we're being very general here, then monopolistic competition, then oligopoly as competitors, then oligopoly as, uh, as cooperative, and then monopoly all the way at the other end. And that's all we have to say really about economic efficiency.